With Malaysia's healthcare problems recently under the spotlight, how has the government fared in their first 100 days addressing some of the grievances faced by patients and healthcare workers? Dr. Kos Yukeng, co-founder of Malaysian Health Coalition, shares what the government has done right. Maybe two or three wins uh, from the first 100 days uh, might look like the following. Firstly, there have been increased uh, attention as well as uh, numbers of permanent posts for health professionals in Malaysia. So we have converted uh, many contract uh, pharmacists and doctors and paramedics to full-time permanent positions and that is a good thing. The second trend in the right direction would be that Minister Dr. Zaleha has committed uh, to introducing the health white paper in Parliament in June, July this year. And this is a continuation from a predecessor, Minister Kairi Jamaluddin. And the health white paper should survive all health ministers, all prime ministers, because reforms of any health system will take 20, 30 years or so. If we look at the experience from Korea, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, these reforms will take 20 to 30 years and therefore need to survive the comings and goings of health ministers and prime ministers. So that's the second trend in the right direction. The third trend in the right direction is that the budget allocation for 2023 is higher than one for 2024. What we think uh, among health professionals and in the Malaysian Health Coalition is that these numbers need to be having a scheduled predictable increase year on year so that the Ministry of Health will be able to plan for multi-year projects with some certainty of funding instead of being reliant year on year on what the Finance Ministry is giving to them. Those are the three early wins. Moving forward, Dr. Kaur emphasizes on the importance of public-private partnership to solve the issue of overcrowding at government hospitals. He also revisits the idea of a healthcare reform commission that was earlier proposed by the health ministry. 145 uh, government KKM hospitals, uh, about uh, 11 um, university hospitals and 5 uh, military hospitals are just what we have in the public sector. But the private sector has about 200 private hospitals, about 8,000 private clinics, and a total of about 20, 22,000 hospital beds. That's a significant resource in Malaysia's health system overall that we can tap on to decongest uh, waiting lines at emergency departments, decongest hospital beds, deliver better healthcare, and so on. There is no time to lose, says Dr. Kaur, when it comes to investing in long-term measures to better the healthcare system. This can begin with establishing a reform commission. Start the process for long-term reforms in Malaysia. There's a long list of all the things that we need to reform. Uh, my personal favourite is to categorise them into three. Human capital, sustainable financing and organisation of service delivery. What does service delivery mean? How many clinics and hospitals do you need? How much private and public um, healthcare do you need? These are the three main areas for us to, uh, well, reform. But to do that reform, we probably need a health reform commission, which has been described in the healthcare white paper, and that health reform commission will guide the reforms for the next 10, 20, 30 years or so. And that will be one important vehicle for Malaysia to survive any political transition, like um, administrations change, ministers change, and that's all, uh, all good and fine and natural and desirable even. The health reform commission will be there to guide the reforms for the next 20 to 30 years.